Let's review every single major GM automatic V8 transmission of the last 70 years. What's the strongest 4 speed? What years were they made? What's the difference between the 4L70 and the 4L80? And what's the best option if you want to go from a 3 speed to a 4 speed with minimal changes? And can you swap a modern 6, 8, or 10 speed into your classic car? I did a video like this on the small block Chevy and it has hundreds of thousands of views. I've spent three weeks putting this video together and it's a list of 15 transmissions from Powerglide to the 10 speed 10L90. I'm a firm believer in visual learning, so I've created this unique timeline of all V8 automatic transmissions. This will really help you get a clear picture of what's happened over the last few decades. You won't find anything like this anywhere else. Okay, first up, the two-speed Powerglide, launched in 1950 as one of the early automatic transmissions. This was not GM's first automatic. That was introduced in 1940. At launch, the Powerglide was a $159 option, which represented about 10% of the cost of the car back then. The early transmissions had to be manually shifted, but starting in 53, they were fully automatic. The transmission was updated in 1962 with some refinements, and the case was switched over to aluminum instead of cast iron. If you are looking for a power glide, definitely look for a 62 or newer one. The two-speed power glide was used for over 20 years. It was completely phased out by 1973. But the power glide is still popular with racers because of its simplicity and lightweight internals and body. It's less than 100 pounds. The Turbo 400 was introduced in 1964 in Buicks and Cadillacs, then in Chevys and Oldsmobiles in 1965. This is GM's heavy-duty three-speed transmission used for three decades. The TH400 was used on trucks, large displacement and high-torque engines, and full-size cars with towing packages. It was widely used in the 60s and 70s. It was rated at about 450 pound-feet and was even used in other brands like Jeep, Jaguar, Rolls-Royce, and even a Ferrari. The one downside to the Turbo 400 is its heavier internal rotating mass. It probably uses a few extra horsepower than the Turbo 350, so use the 350 if you don't have a powerful engine. The three-speed Turbo 350 replaced the two-speed Powerglide and was used in medium-duty car and light-duty truck applications from 1969 to its phase-out in the mid-80s. The 350 was often considered a three-speed Powerglide, and even internally at GM, that's how it was referred to. It was generally able to handle up to about 400 pound-feet of torque. In the 80s, there was a push for fuel economy. Everyone had fresh memories of the recent OPEC oil crisis, and Detroit was losing market share to smaller Japanese cars. The 204R was introduced as GM's first four-speed automatic overdrive transmission. It launched in the 1981 Chevy Corvette and was later used in the legendary Buick Grand National. Despite this, its failures in early mainstream applications gave it a somewhat bad reputation. It was pretty wimpy, but it did come out in the early 80s when horsepower numbers were averaging just over 100. But it can be built for big performance, over 700 horsepower. Stock, it's good for about 300. It's also ideal for swapping with a Turbo Hydromatic 350 or Powerglide because the overall length are the same. It's almost a direct drop-in. The 700R4 launched the next year in the 82 model year Corvette. It's also an overdrive four-speed transmission, used on rear-wheel drive cars and trucks behind 305s, 350s, and even 454s. The Blazer, Suburban, Corvette, Camaro, Impala, and others use this transmission. It's good for about 350 horsepower in stock form. The trans was upgraded in 87. Those are the ones you want. Like the 204R, it had around a 30% overdrive fourth gear which means in fourth gear on the freeway, the engine is spinning about 30% slower than a three-speed transmission would be. Both of these transmissions feature lockup torque converters to allow direct non-slip connection through the transmission. This provides the benefit of 200 RPM lower cruising, further fuel savings, and cooler transmission temperatures. If doing a Gen 1 or 2 small block, these are okay transmissions, but if doing a LS, go with the 4L80, that's coming up. Do note that in 1990, GM changed its automatic transmission nomenclature and the 700R4 became the 4L60. Despite the name change, operation of the transmission remained exactly the same for a few years. The 3L80 is just a renamed Turbo 400. It was still used in the early 90s till being phased out by the 4-speed. The 4L80E was launched for the 91 model year and is GM's first electronically controlled transmission. It's an overdrive evolution of the Turbo 400 and much, much more capable than the 204R or 700R4. The 4L80 was used in some half-ton trucks, depending on options and trim, and in all other heavier duty applications, all the way up until the 2009 model year and even beyond in some low-tech trucks and vans. It's rated at around 440 pound-feet officially by GM 
and some say safe to around 450 horsepower in stock form. The 4L80 is the four-speed transmission you want. It's pretty bulletproof. The only downside is it's 70 pounds heavier than the 4L60 family, but it's worth it if you want to mod your engine and or drive aggressively or go off-road. All 4L80 E transmissions are electronically controlled. In researching this video, I kept coming across this Transgo reprogramming kit. Everyone was recommending it for the 4L80. It does not require trans removal and fits all 4L80s from 91 and up. It's essentially a performance shift kit, but it can also eliminate or reduce many common problems. It's a must for worn out or junkyard bot transmissions. I got a link for that down in the description. The 2002 4L85E is an upgraded trans officially rated 20 pound feet above the 4L80. The main difference is the 85's planetary gear sets have five pinion gears versus four on the 4L80. It's a beast and a great choice for heavy vehicles, off-road racing, or drag racing. You can find the GM 4L85E transmission in the big block Chevrolet Avalanche, Suburban, and Yukon, and heavy duty vans from around 2001-ish to 2006-ish. GM Performance also offers an aftermarket Supermatic 4L85E, which is rated at 690 pound-feet if you're looking for something with major power capability. Also, if you want to check used and new prices for these transmissions, I have links below organized for every transmission on this list. The 204R was discontinued, but the renamed 700R4 continued on as the 4L60, and then the 4L60E was added in 1993 when it had electronic controls added. The new electronic control meant the trans was switched over from a hydraulic logic shifting system to an electronic one, much like the 4L80E. Mechanically, the 4L60's core internals were the same, but the valve body and actuation system for the clutches, bands, etc. became controlled by electronic actuators and solenoids. The 4L60E was used mainly in light-duty half-ton trucks and car applications. The 4L65E and 4L70E were launched years later, designed to handle the increased power of the new LS series engines, which were introduced starting in 1997. They are strengthened versions of the 4L60E, and the 65 and 70 have five pinion gear sets, hardened shafts, and a few other improvements. But changes are actually pretty minimal. The 65 was used on 6 liter engines, and the 70 was used in the Trailblazer SS. There is some confusion online about the naming of these transmissions. Under the new designation, the 4 stands for the number of forward gears, the L for longitudinal applications, in this case rear wheel drive, a T would mean transverse applications or front wheel drive, and the 80 is a strength rating. This is where there is some confusion. For example, 80 is stronger than 60, which is stronger than 40, etc. A 4L80E can handle more torque than a 4L60E, but the 80 is just a relative torque value relative to the other transmissions with lower numbers. It does not mean it can handle 800 pound-feet of torque. It does not mean it can handle an 8,000 pounds of vehicle weight or rev to 8,000 RPM. It just means 80 has more capability than 60. The E denotes electronically controlled shifting. GM has stopped using the E since everything has been electronically controlled since the early 90s. If you like this kind of detailed information, please consider subscribing, it's free. GM's V8s mostly skipped having five-speed transmissions. Only the Cadillac Northstar had a five-speed for a few years. The 6L80 six-speed automatic transmission debuted in the 2006 Chevy Corvette and a year later in GM's all-new 2007 full-size SUVs. The 6L80 has two overdrive gears, reducing engine RPM 9% at 60 miles an hour. So at 60, you are now cruising at 1500 RPM. And GM claimed a fuel economy increase of 4% when compared to four and five-speed automatics. I know this doesn't sound like much, but the average American drives 14,000 miles per year, and the average price of gas in the US today is $3.50. That's an average fuel savings of around $100 a year and if you keep your truck for 10 years that's a thousand dollars that's real money and of course a lower rpm cruising speed also reduces vibration and noise in the vehicle's cabin gm also estimates that the wide ratio spread in the six speed can cut zero to 60 mile an hour times by as much as seven percent that's like reducing a seven second zero to 60 to six and a half seconds so multiple speed transmissions work that's why gm kept going and we have the eight and ten speeds today which we'll cover in a moment but 
The one big problem with these new six-speed transmissions is that they are fat and tall, and the height is mostly below the shaft center line, which means that the pan hangs down very low. These won't fit in many classic cars unless you do some serious metal work, but they are easier to fit in classic trucks. The 6L90 is a heavy-duty version of the 6L80 used on trucks and some performance cars. It shares about 75% of its parts with its weaker 6L80 cousin. The case is a bit longer due to its wider and stronger gear sets, and the 6L90 has 34 spline output shaft versus the 80's 32 spline. GM began using the 8-speed 8L90 for the 2015 model year in the Corvette, Camaro, Silverado, Escalade, etc. Somehow GM was able to fit all the 8-speed parts in the same space as the previous 6L90 6-speed. GM also used more aluminum and even magnesium to make it 8 pounds lighter too. GM claims the 8L90 is up to 5% more efficient than the outgoing 6-speed. This time I'll spare you the numbers. This trans also features new performance algorithms shifting which monitors how you are driving and shifts more aggressively if needed. It also has driver shift control which allows the driver to shift the transmission like a clutchless manual gearbox but with electronic safeguards to prevent selecting the wrong gear when downshifting. This is a cool feature to help make automatics ever so slightly less boring. At launch GM claimed that 8L90 wide open throttle upshifts can be executed at eight hundredths of a second quicker than the Porsche 911 dual clutch transmission of the day. But there is or was a class action lawsuit with the 8L90 transmission. It allegedly has some serious issues. GM has issued 13 technical service bulletins related to this issue, so beware. Unbelievably, GM's 10-speed transmissions were actually a Ford GM collaboration. I know, crazy, right? Together they made two 10-speed transmissions, one for rear-wheel drive applications and one for front-wheel drive. For GM, the 10-speed first appeared as the more robust 10L90 on the 2017 650 horsepower Camaro ZL. 1. 10 forward speeds with three overdrive ratios. Wow, times have changed since the power glide. First gear ratio on the power glide is the same as the fourth gear on the 10L80. The top gear, which is only second gear on the power glide, is almost the same ratio as seventh on the 10L90. The 10L80 launched in 2018, a year after the 10L90. The 10L80 is used in everything, SS Camaros and trucks and SUVs. It's a super modern trans with paddle shifters and launch control. The 10L80 is rated at 590 pound feet, about 100 less than the heavy duty 10L90. Please consider subscribing as I will be making detailed videos on each of these transmissions covered here. The first one will be the 4L80 and 85, and then the 4L60. And I will be focusing heavily on LS swapping these transmissions. For swappers, keep in mind that the six speeds will swap on LS, but the eight and 10 speeds will not. To swap an 8 or 10 speed transmission, you will need a Gen 5 LT small block engine. People are starting to swap these now. I'm planning to do a swap specific video soon for transmissions. So again, subscribe if that's something you want to see. I want to let you know that I'm working on an LS Swap Survival Guide ebook, which is now free to pre-order on my website, but once it's finished it will not be free, so pre-order now. 11 reasons to order the ebook. 1. It's already over 120 pages and I'm adding pages all the time. 2. It has help with choosing everything, new versus used, car versus truck engine, iron block versus aluminum, displacements, cylinder heads, intakes, and so much more. 3. You'll save money too as I explain which parts are worth replacing or upgrading. Don't buy parts you don't need. Too many swappers make this expensive mistake. One of my goals was to have this ebook solve any problem, not just major ones, but little things like tiny sensors, gaskets, relays, everything you need for a swap has a dedicated page in my ebook. This way, you don't need to spend days searching dozens of websites and videos for a solution. Complicated topics are made simple. Wiring, sensors, fuel regulators, injectors, tuning, electrical harnesses, and more. If you've seen my videos, you know I have an amazing ability to simplify complex topics. I also have a list of 21 potential problem areas to look out for. Some are easy repairs you should absolutely do before you install the engine. Others are just things to look out for. I'm a firm believer that you need to do your research before starting an expensive project. I've done this research. This will save you money as you won't need to buy the wrong parts or do the wrong things. Once downloaded, you can save the ebook on your phone, home computer, or tablet. Once you buy it, you own it. Email it to a friend, no problem. Split the cost with three friends, no problem. And unlike a paperback book that you buy and never gets improved, this ebook will be regularly updated. But the best part is, those future updates are all free. 
always free, and they are updates for life. No need to resubmit an order or contact Auto Guild or repay ever. We just email the update to you as soon as it's completed. This, of course, is the one big benefit of buying your own copy. When finished, I will have put over 1,000 hours of research into this book. Pre-order now at autoguild.com. A link is also down in the description below. I also have a few free eBooks on my website. An LS cylinder head book. It breaks down all 20 LS cylinder heads in eight groups. Now available and ready to be downloaded. The intake manifold eBook explains all seven factory LS intakes. These eBooks also have convenient eBay links to check current prices for these items, both used and remanufactured. I finally have an eBook for my first video, which shows all 36 LS engines by year and model. That video now has over half a million views. These ebooks are all based on my videos but also have some additional information. All of them are now available at autoguild.com and all three are free, like I said. A link to the website is in the description of this video. I have posters on the website too. A history of the LS engine, poster version of my first video, every LS engine ever. I also have a choose your own path poster where you answer funny questions and the poster picks the best type of muscle car for you. And three, I have a poster of my LS cylinder head video and ebook for your shop or garage. All three of these posters were handmade by me. You will likely have the only one in your city. They make a great conversation piece for your garage or shop. Thank you for watching Auto Guild and good luck with your project.